Hey, what's up, everybody? Chris Souter, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again this afternoon for another Tackle Talk Tuesday live show. Uh, this is uh, the second series of kind of like how to catch skipjack, where to catch skipjack, um, tips, tricks, things like that. So real quick, uh, if you could, let me know the sound is good. Let me know you guys can hear me great and everything is working uh, like it should be. Got the chat opened up on the laptop again tonight. So if you guys got any questions, um, we're gonna make sure and try to hit a bunch of questions tonight for everybody that may have them. Uh, make sure you hit those up in the questions, in the comments. Uh, if you could hit, uh, do the at Chris Souter so it pops up uh, bright yellow for me and I can pick it out quick. Um, I wanna thank everybody for joining. Uh, if this is your first time uh, joining the Tackle Talk Tuesday live show, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this won't be your last. And I want to thank you guys for joining and taking the time out of your night to come and listen to me talk and listen to me try to uh, teach you guys something about uh, how to catch more and bigger fish. So let's get this thing started. For anybody that was, uh, that, you know, this is your, the first one you've watched, kind of the skipjack of, you know, where, how, when, and uh, things like that. Last week, we kind of started this uh, series of how to catch skipjack. Um, for those of you that didn't get to watch it, you know, make sure that you go back and you check it out. Uh, we covered a lot of good information. Even in the comments, there was a lot of good tips and a lot of good uh, questions and things like that. So, uh, you know, go back, check that out, um, you know, whenever you get a chance. But tonight is going to be kind of, uh, you know, what we use to catch skipjack, um, you know, how to catch skipjack more so than where and what they are. Okay, so last week we covered kind of, you know, what they were. Let's see if we can get this back up and running. I hope everybody is having a great week uh, for me. Uh, we are just getting back from the Sea Ark Invitational uh, last weekend in Decatur, Alabama. Um, I know some of you have been eager to know how it went. And, you know, I cannot, you know, just like uh, many tournaments that we fish, you know, a lot of boats show up. It was a great sh uh, great um, turnout. I think there was like 196 uh, boats entered or maybe it was like more than more like 200 entered, but only 196 showed up. Um, absolute phenomenal uh, time. We had a blast. Um, can't say enough, you know, for everybody that helped work, you know, work the tournament. Uh, Steve Henderson and the whole Sea Art gang, they've done a, a phenomenal job. Um, Dave Shipman and his partner, uh, they've done a phenomenal job of taking home that, that win. Uh, congratulations to them. Congratulations to all the top finishers uh, that finished in that tournament. You all done a spectacular job. Uh, I fished, I teamed up with uh, Larry Lang, um, which is Doc Lang's uh, son. Um, for you guys that know Doc, they do Catfish Weekly every Monday evening. Um, I teamed up with him, and we didn't do as well as what we would wanted to, but, you know, we had a great time. Uh, ended up somewhere like 31st or something like that. Like I said, we just couldn't get that big bite, but we had an absolute awesome time. So, let's see. As always, this is not wanting to pop up now. So, we're going to jump right into this. So, skipjack, what do we use to catch skipjack? Uh, kind of how, uh, you know... How do we use it? Things like that. So I'm going to start with kind of what gear. Um, we're going to kind of touch on what gear we use a little bit. So, uh, and, I, and we'll have to kind of uh, do this in a couple, you know, a couple different things. Because where you are geographically, uh, whether you, you know, if you, like a, for me, here on the Ohio River, our skipjack are not nearly as big as say Alabama skipjack, and you you want to be prepared for that. Um, you know, on the Ohio River, you know we catch a lot of you know 14, 15, 16 inch skipjack, but you go down to uh, say you know Willer Dam, 
uh, Watts Bar Dam, Nick Jack, Chickamauga, stuff, you know, places like that, you know, you're liable to get into some of those Alabama sized skipjack where you're liable to catch a, you know, two or three two pound skipjack at one time. So, you, you know, in that case, you got to match the, the gear that you use for that, for that size of fish. So we will kind of, you know, I'll kind of show you both, <clears throat> you know, uh, both that uh, both sizes that I use and and kind of talk about why you know why I use them so anyway we'll start with uh, I use cadence a lot of you guys have heard heard me talk about cadence uh, rod and reels in the past as you can see this has got lots of <laughs> lots of skipjack uh, uh, you know scales on it <clears throat> this is a CR5 uh, rod and a C, uh, CS7 reel. Um, this is kind of a, this is a, what they call a 30 ton, um, medium, medium fast. So you can kind of see it's kind of a softer, uh, more flexible rod, you know, got, you know, got a lot of give to it. Uh, it's not as stiff or heavy, you know, as something that I would use for like an Alabama uh, going to Alabama and catching skipjack, you know this is this is my go-to style of um, rig, you know, rod and reel for Ohio uh, river skipjack style stuff. So that's that, and I'll sit that right there. Now, for say, you know, when we go to uh, you know Alabama like this this past weekend, uh, you know, I use the this is a CR7. This is a medium heavy. Uh, it's, it's a fast, you know, fast action. Can't get it all on the camera. Uh, this is a. This is actually a uh, a six nine, you know, seven foot rod. Uh, I got, you know, it's got the nice split grips on it. That's uh, a CS ten reel. Okay. Now I use a ten pound line monofilament on all my bait rods, and then I use a 17 pound uh, leader line, you know, just because they're, you know, they get tore up from the skipjack so much. But now this is a little bit heavier rod. Uh, it can handle, you know, more weight, uh, more skipjack at one time. Um, it's a little bit longer, so we can cast it farther. Uh, and, you know, it's got a, a, a bigger reel with more line capacity. Not, not so much that you need the line capacity, but that you just need that bigger reel to be able to handle, uh, you know, the size of fish that you're gonna, you're gonna be, you know, the two to three, you know, two pound skipjacks at the same time. Um, as always, if you guys are liking the information that we're putting out, make sure you give me that thumbs up. Make sure you're hitting, uh, you know, going in the comments, leaving those questions. Uh, don't forget, this is where we get our information to do these shows for you. So make sure you guys are you know, giving that information to me so I can help you guys out as much as we possibly can. Uh, real quick, uh, whenever I was talking about the Sea Arc tournament, I meant to mention something and I didn't, and I, I apologize. There was a, uh, there was a lot, well, not, I don't want to say a lot, but several people that come up to me at the Sea Arc tournament and, you know, said thank you for the information that I'm putting out. Um, you know, uh, wanted to shake my hand and meet me and, you know, just kind words and, encouragement that what you know what i'm doing is is good and and it's good information it's helping people and and i can't thank you enough uh for the people that support me and support the channel and and uh you know it makes me feel good whenever somebody uh is you know comes up and and tells me that you know they was able to catch a big fish or or catch their bait or you know put their put their kid or grandkid or wife or uh significant other you know, on fish because of something that they learned from this channel. And that, that really, I, I'm not getting, I'm not getting soft on you guys, but that really makes me feel good. And I, I want to thank you guys for that. So moving on. <clears throat> so now me personally, whenever I go to Alabama or, um, you know, around here close, I like, I like using a bait caster reel. And once again, this is a, a split grip. Uh, this is their, their newer version of, uh, they just kind of come out with the the bait caster style reels. Uh, this is a CR7 uh, 40 ton. I guess I could turn that over for you guys, can I? 
This is a 40 ton. It's a, it, it's just really a good heavy rod. Okay, this is, um, this is a heavy fast. You know, it can really handle you know everything. This is a longer rod. This is seven foot four inch rod. Um, if I was a bass fisherman, I would kind of compare this to a flipping rod. Um, nice, strong, durable. Uh, you can, you know, the the rigs in Alabama where you can use more than you know more hooks. Uh, it's nice to be able to have a longer rod to be able to cast it easier. So this is a seven to three, seven, seven to point three to one gear ratio. Uh, these little reels have an enormous amount of drag. Um, right off the top of my head, I'm wanting to think it's like 20 pounds of drag on these little reels. I'm actually, and this is a good question for you guys. Um, I've been thinking about doing a light tackle catfishing video. If that is something that you guys would like uh, for me to take this out down um, to the to the local dam and do some bumping uh, on this light gear and see what we could catch put some braided line on this baby and put it to the test if that's something you guys would like to see let me you know put it in the comments and let me know I'd love to do that it would be fun to be able to go out and uh, you know catch some big old fish on that let's see <clears throat> all right let's see if we got any if I can bring this up all right so now that is the uh, rods reels kind of stuff that uh, that I use um, next we're going to kind of go into you know kind of like the, the soft plastics that we use uh, the jigs the uh, sabikis <clears throat> you know things of that nature and there's a lot of different things that people you know that people use and are successful with um, I personally like you know a few certain ones um, one thing right off the bat I want to tell you guys is if you skipjack fish or if you fish period crappie um, even if you're a walleye fisherman rig wraps it's so nice to be able to have everything you know tied up ready ready to go if you break one off if you want to change, it's so easy. You guys have heard me say that so many times. Um, real quick, I'm going to try to get back online to get the chat open. So it's not going to do it now. All right, well, we're just going to have to go through, make sure uh, if you guys have any questions. I know I've seen somebody ask about um, how many hooks you can, you're allowed um, real quick, if if you're in Ohio, uh, you know you're going to want to use three, uh, three hooks uh, per rig. And as you can see, in a lot of my rigs, I just do three. Okay. So, rig wraps are a great thing for you know for this. It keeps you organized. It keeps you uh, from getting you know so many hooks tangled up. Uh, you know it, it makes a just, it's a lot of help, a lot of good things. So, um, to start with, let's talk about some of the jigs, uh, different styles of jigs that I use. Um, and, and once again, the size, the size that you use will depend on where you're at. Uh, for instance, you know, if you're in Alabama and you're trying to catch two and three pound skipjack, you can go with a bigger jig or a bigger size grub. Um, but if you're for instance, if we're in Ohio, um, this is a fully spoon, okay? I'm gonna use this size, which is their, their smaller, smallest uh, inch and, I believe it's an inch and an eighth uh, fully spoon. And you know, if I go to Alabama, you know, I may use the inch and a half or, or two inch uh, fully spoon, okay? And you know, they got different colors. This is white, um, they got the chrome, and they got chartreuse and depending on a lot of different things uh, will depend on you know you just got to try different colors and what they want so uh, some different things that I like to use uh, we like to use shiny heinies you guys can see these this is the chrome like chrome with red eyes I really like red eyes and I don't know why uh, this is kind of a white body as well 
And I, for some reason, I am just drawn to red hooks, uh, red eyes, uh, you know, things like that on a lot of different things, uh, whether it be, you know, the demon dragons I use, the hooks I use for catfishing, you know, whatever, you know, whatever it may be. Um, another, so this is a, just a white hair jig. Let's see if I got one, I got one out of the, I've been using here. You see it's nice and fluffy. This is a eighth ounce. No, that's a 32nd. I'm sorry. That's a 32nd ounce. Um, these are, now these are the little bit bigger ones. This is just a white curly tail grub. And these are an eighth ounce. And let's see here. And I like to buy, I like to buy these already with the, with the grubs on them to start with and then you can then you can just buy the bigger packs the bigger packs of grubs to put on there and there's so many different uh, so many different things you know that uh, different collar combinations you know chartreuse and like gold flake with green pumpkin um, you know white white and chrome tubes you know, and all this stuff, you know, has caught fish uh, for me in the past. Uh, just plain white. This, these are. Let's see what size these are. Okay, these are the inch. Um, whoever asked that question, I use both uh, two uh, two inch and inch and a half grubs. And it, it just depends on the size of skipjack that you're using. Uh, obviously, you know, once again, if we're down in down in uh, Alabama, and we're after bigger skipjack. You know, we can get away with the the bigger the bigger grubs with the bigger weights. But if we're on a higher river where normally we are after you know 14 inch, 16 inch skipjack, then we can you know go with a smaller smaller grub. Uh, there's a little bit of diff, you know a little bit of, a little trick to that uh, here in a minute that I'll go over. Um, another grub that I really like too is uh, the one. It's a twister. It's a Mister Twister, but this is a uh, this is a two inch grub, and and I use I do use the two inch most generally because that's a like a you know a, a all around good size, but these have little black dots on them and it just adds a little extra something to it um, but uh, collar and size is something that you want to continuously uh, definitely you know change another go-to that I like is is the chartreuse the green so but the main the main ones that I stick to on a regular basis are Pink and white, okay. And then let's see. This is the this is a thirty second ounce. I like those a lot, and I like. Uh, I hope I didn't run out of them. I know I got some rigged up here. Here they are. These little. 32nd ounce uh, shiny honeys yellow and red that is like my go-to right there I love that collar I love the the I don't know why but they just there's a lot of times they really like that yellow um, so let's talk about something else too <clears throat> and this okay so a, something I want to stress about uh, sabikis Um, Jason, uh, okay, so good question just come in, and I want to touch on it uh, real quick before we move forward. He asks, do I use one collar all the time, or do I switch up things? Or do I use multiple collars uh, at a time? So, uh, for instance, we have, 
this rig set up with just pink jig heads with uh, little two inch curly tail grubs on them. Um, these are, uh, I believe, eighth ounce or 30 second ounce jig heads. Um, so the good thing about like just a jig head is you can use a white on this one, you know, on the bottom, uh, chartreuse, maybe a, a black or red, you know, on, uh, on your other one. And what he's asking is, uh, do I run one collar or do I run multiple collars? And if you're there by yourself, it's a good idea to, you know, maybe run multiple collars and, and see if they're hitting a the green all the time, uh, you know, go to green. If they're hitting white all the time, go to white. If they're hitting a the black all the time, go to black. And that just kind of helps you hone in on the collar that they want uh, quicker, okay? So that's a good question, Jason, and I'm glad you brought that up. So we was, okay, moving on to, to uh, Sabiki's. So um, one thing I want to stress is that if you're going to use Sabiki's, make sure that you, uh, you know, read your laws for the state that you're going to be in. Um, some laws don't have a hook limit. Uh, some laws have a two hook limit, a three hook limit, you know, things of that nature. And you want to make sure that you're, you know, that you're reading, you know, you know those. Um, sorry, I was reading a question. So, you know, make sure you read your laws before you, you know, you go out there and you start fishing because Mr. Uh, Game Warden will fine you if you are over your hook limit, okay? And not only that, you know, we just, we want to make sure that we're doing stuff right. Uh, want set want to set good examples for anybody that might be watching and uh, you know have a clear conscience at the end of the day okay so sabikis these are uh, you know absolutely great ways to catch uh, skipjack uh, this here is a um, five hook skipjack rig they come in uh, five six eight nine hook uh, you know, style sabikis. Uh, many different ways to rig these up. Even if you're, let's say you're you're in like Ohio, um, where we can only be allowed to use three three hooks at one time. Um, a good thing to do is to pull this apart and cut it in the middle. Uh, I have some six hooks in here as well. I thought I did. Okay. So, like, I have some six hook sabikis, and what I will do is I will cut those in half, and I will be able to make uh, three or two sabiki rigs out of the one. Okay. Or if I'm in Alabama, you know, where I can use the whole sabiki all together, I will. And the good thing about these are, if you can see up there on top, you know, they already have a snap swivel where you can hook a sinker uh, to help cast it because these weigh literally nothing. And they have a swivel where you tie your main line. And it's really nice. You can see up top, uh, they have little cuts where all the lines are, lines go in. So whenever you open it up, you tie it to the swivel and you can just kind of work it out. Um, and then whenever you're done with it, you can wrap it up and put it into a, a rig wrap. Uh, for instance, I have one set up here already and that is like a red uh, gold sparkle which is a really good color I like that and it's got a green uh, green bead for the head you can see I already have my sinker hooked up to it uh, there's that's a full length sabiki you know so uh, Kentucky waters you can use these um, uh, down in Alabama you can use these but around here where we're at uh, we cannot, you know, we got to use uh, three, three hook rigs. Um, here's another collar that I really like, and while, I'm, while I was just opening these up, I wanted to show you guys. This is a black and white, uh, like a hair boo jig style. Um, 
Those are 32nd ounce as well. They got a real big white eye. Uh, now I like to throw these when the water is kind of muddy or murky. Um, really seems to really seems to work good. Uh, sometimes whenever they're they're finicky, they really they'll they'll take to that black collar. Okay, so um, another here's another thing that I got set up, which is just just plain white uh, uh, pink and white jigs. As you can see, I got three set up. Um, I got a little, a little uh, tiny eighth ounce weight hooked up to it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, they may not, let me see here. Uh, like for instance, I got this, this one is set up with a, a sinker tied on the end, as you can see. You can see the, you got the last hook, and then I got a about a quarter ounce, a half ounce sinker on the end of it, and you know the reason I do that is so that I can, if I'm fishing from the bank, let me get this hooked here. If I'm if I'm fishing from the bank, I can cast it farther, or if I'm fishing up in the dam and that swift current, it'll help me get down uh, deeper, quicker. Uh, you know, so sometimes, sometimes those, those skipjack will be deeper and sometimes they will be up on top. Um, John Miller, uh, you ask a good question. Uh, John's asking, do I ever, uh, do I ever use a snap, uh, weights and then just let the current do the work? So here's a good uh, tip for you guys. If you guys are, are out fishing in a boat, um, there's a lot of people that do this now. Um, you know, it's, it's a very effective way to do it. Uh, it's, it's a good way to use more than one rod. Uh, you know, we, what we do is we'll just take, you know, take our, our rigs like this here, uh, which is just nothing more than two inch curly tails with, with the weight hooked on the end and we'll cast them out behind the back of the boat. And then you just put your rod in your rod holder and the current's going back through there and it's just working and wiggling and, and uh, doing its thing. Uh, you know, you can add a fully spoon to that to kind of flash, um, you know, and it just sets in there. And as the skipjack are moving around and looking for baits and stuff, there, there that is up there and they will come up there and grab it. and. You know it's in the rod holder so they grab it they pull it down just like you use catfishing and you can bring them in and you constantly have baits in the water uh, that does work it doesn't work all the time um, but it does work and it's a very effective effective tip uh, to use um, let's see now here is something you know, I, I know i told you guys that uh, you know this collar was kind of like my uh, go-to collar you know the shiny hot yellow and red shiny honeys with the chrome uh, body but this is something that I like to do you can't I can't do it here because there's you know obviously I have too many hooks uh, but this is what I was using in Alabama this weekend and what I do is I will have uh, three shiny honeys in a row okay there's one two three Okay, and then, and then I will where the where the weight would normally go. I'll put a swivel and a small this and this can be either a quarter, half, three quarters, up to an ounce, uh, depending on how much current you have. Then I use another swivel just to kind of keep that keep that in there, and then I'll have about. 18 inches of leader line down to a fully spoon okay now I will warn you up front this that rig right there will get tangled up a lot you will pull your hair out because it gets tangled up so much while casting it but you know and what happens is the fully spoon will come up past the sinker 
and get tangled up with you know your uh, shiny honeys going through the air but i i love that rig that is kind of uh whenever especially whenever i'm fishing um waters where i can use multiple hooks um you know that is that is a rig that i go to that's kind of like my favorite rig you know you can uh, especially put it on a bait caster you can cast it out let it sink um you know and get it close to the bottom whenever those skipjack go deep or you can burn it up on top of the water uh, whenever they're really busting on top of the water okay now uh, let's see we've kind of covered uh, the rig the the rod and reels line um, kind of went over touched on some of the uh, the gear that we use um, uh, the sabikis here's another white uh, this comes from Diachi. Um, the white and red with the red hook once again I don't know why I'm just drawn to red as you guys know I mean I got a red boat I got a red truck I got red hooks I got I, I love red um, here's another little thing that I've been working with I've been trying so these are kind of instead of having and I, I haven't worked with them much so I don't want to sit here and say that they they work or they're better or they're not better but um, you know as you can see on this one I got a loop uh, just like I would tie my double hook rigs for my catfishing um, but I I put it through the eye okay and then I tie the knot there these just kind of you you kind of they will sit just like in line like that like they are in that package you know, uh, on your line, and they don't have the loop. So I'm not, I don't know how much action they would have, but I'm interested to, to try it. And yes, uh, real quick, uh, you know, I probably won't get into it tonight, but we are definitely going to be covering the flash freezing uh, part or the handling of bait. Um, I'm going to do kind of like its own separate, uh, you know, video live show kind of on that um i might try to catch some bait one day and keep it and then kind of show you guys live what i do with that so if there's any questions uh once again make sure you guys are bringing them up uh, for some reason i cannot connect so if i haven't answered your question uh, i'll be watching it now make sure you bring it you know you pop it back up I can't bring the pop. I can't pop it up on a computer for some reason now. So if you ask a question and I didn't answer it, I apologize. But just bring it, uh, type it again, and bring it up now while we're while we're answering questions or the question answering part of this video. Let's see what else is there. Oh, let's talk about um, kind of action. Um, so so when we talk about action, I'm gonna put some of this stuff up while we're while we're talking about this. Uh, we want to talk about, you know, retrieval. Uh, some, uh, you know, uh, some will, some, some days uh, the skipjack want it slow. Some days they want it fast. Uh, you know, you, you know, just like collars. Michael King, uh, that's a good question. Uh, Michael wants to uh, wants me to cover, um, you know, times of year, uh, water temps, uh, you know, things things of that nature. Uh, Jeff, um, I'll get I'll get to that here in a second, Jeff. Uh, so, you know, times of year, you know, we kind of covered this uh, last week, but I'm going to briefly touch on it again. You know. Uh, depending on where you're at geographically, you know, as far as how things heat up. Uh, for instance, uh, right now, we are in southern Ohio. Um, if you are watching this and you're around the southern Ohio area, uh, you know, now the skipjack are really starting to come into the dams. Um, and, you know, it is our opportunity to be able to go out and put a few in a freezer to keep. 
Um, you know, I, I highly stress that, you know, if you're going to do that, don't over harvest, uh, just like anything. Uh, you know, we can, we can over harvest on, on those and our catfish and other stripers and other predator fish need these bait fish to, to survive. So we don't want to go out and over harvest, um, you know, or take more than what we need or more than what we're going to use. So, but now is the time if you were in Southern Ohio area, you know, they're coming into the green up dam, the Mel doll, uh, the, the uh, uh, Robert C. Bird, the Marklin, um, those dams are really starting to see and produce a lot of skipjack. So, so if you were in that area, make sure you're checking them out, put a few in the freezer uh, for the summer. Um, the time of year is, uh, is gonna differ. So for Alabama, um, you know, like say Pickwick, uh, Willer, Wilson, you know, those, those dams, there's a lot of years that they don't even stop coming to the dam. You know, they will uh, be there or around in that area all, you know, all times of year. Um, but here in Ohio, you know, we normally start seeing them about the second week of May, uh, well, is whenever we kind of, kind of start seeing them on a regular basis. Uh, some years, if it warms up to that 70, to, you know, um, high mid 60s, you know, uh, degrees, where it's starting to really warm up, and you start seeing that activity uh, coming towards the dams, then they will they can be earlier. I've seen them as early as like mid April, uh, but also as late as mid May. So, uh, just depending on the time of year, will depend on you know whether they get here early or not, and you know that will differ. Uh, depending on where you're at, uh, obviously, the uh, the farther you go south, um, you know, the uh, sooner you'll get them. The farther you go north, uh, the later you'll get them. And um, I seen a question come through. Uh, uh, I seen a question on you know where to find them. Uh, you know, lock and dams. Um, you know, if you're fishing a lock and dam, you know, look for those big current seams coming off the uh, coming off the bank. Uh, we covered a lot of that last week, so make sure you get you know you go back to last week's uh, video to check as much of that information as you possibly can and learn you know what what to look for at those dams. Um, you know, the seam lines. You know what they look like and how to fish them. Uh, we covered a lot of that last week, so make sure make sure you go back and you check that video out. You'll get a lot of information from that one. So, uh, let's talk about um, kind of action. You know, when we're talking about, uh, as you can see, skipjack will bend a hook. <laughs> that was a big Alabama skipjack. Um, when we're talking about action, so like for a curly tailed jig. A curly tail jig is, you know, really good for. Let me find them. What do I do with them? I just had them. Okay, there we go. Just a regular, you know, say a two-inch, uh, thirty-second ounce curly tail jig. You know, there's a couple different ways we can uh, we can do a retrieve. Uh, one is just going to be a slow, you know, slow reeling it in. Uh, another could be, you know, kind of like a, spor a sporadic kind of jerk twitch, giving it a little bit of action, giving it kind of like a stop and go. Um, you know, speed will make a big difference too, and you have to play around with that as you as you kind of go through the day of trying to catch them and trying to trying to catch them. There's some days you can go out and you can throw anything. And them jokers will absolutely hit everything and anything you catch, but there's some days where you really, really, really got to fish for them, and you know try different things until you really figure them out. So uh, you know speed will make a difference. Uh, sporadic, uh, you know retrieves will make a difference. Um, if you're using something like like the uh, green, like these green hair jigs. Um, these are actually homemade hair jigs that somebody gave me, and I love them. They work good. I don't even know what color, color you would call that. Almost like a uh, St. Patty's Day green with gold sparkle in them. 
Um, I, I really like those. You know, you really got to kind of twitch it as you bring it back, and um, and and your retrieve can be can be different speeds, but you really you want a nice fast action tip so you can kind of you know really sporadically twitch that bait back to you and and get a good reaction um, you know from those uh, from those baits or from those fish and that is the same way like with these beetle um, hair jigs for these are actually like crappie jigs but they work really well and also like these and and then there's even some days that a nice slow retrieve uh, will work great for those as well okay um, Trying to think here. It's always a good, good idea to have, uh, you know, many different size weights, you know, um, all the way from, you know, just little tiny eighth ounce pinch, uh, pinch, pinch weights to, you know, bigger, you know, like say. Uh, these are eight, these are actually eighth ounce egg sinkers, but you know half ounce egg sinkers, um, you know, uh, dipsy sinkers, you know different different styles and sizes of sinkers uh, to be able to figure out how deep they are and just to help yourself, you know, better your chances. Uh, one thing's for sure, you don't want to just go to a dam with one size uh, sabiki or one size. Um, shiny hiney or beetle or something and that all you have uh, because sure enough if you go there with you know white and chrome the guy beside of you is going to have you know yellow and red or or black and be burning them up and and uh, you want to be able to have be able to switch if you see somebody you know burn them up uh, you want to be able to switch to that so having a good variety is a is always a good thing All right, so we have we have ate up uh, 42 minutes. Wow, that went really quick. That was a good show tonight. Um, I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, you know, make sure make sure you're leaving your comments and the questions. Uh, sorry, I was not able to have them popped up for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, you know they they did not pop up tonight. Um, so sorry, I apologize for that. But make sure you leave them in a, leave your comments in. I will go back and I will try to answer any that I was not able to answer on the show. Uh, make sure you're leaving your questions in there for future shows. Uh, make sure you give me that thumbs up. And if this is, uh, you know, your first time, as always, thank you for watching. Thank everybody for watching. And uh, hopefully, make sure you check that uh, notification bell because I, I'm going to have a new video dropping hopefully tomorrow morning. Um, I think you guys are going to like it a lot. Uh, it's a good video that I had some help editing with, and it turned out really good. So thank everybody for watching. Hope you have a wonderful night, wonderful week. Get out there, get some skipjack, get some good bait, get some fresh bait. It makes the difference. And as always, we will catch you guys next week. Tackle Talk Tuesday live. Till next week, have a wonderful week. Thank you all for watching.